Hey mushroom friends, Anna McHugh here. I'm spending a little bit of time uh, with a couple of bolete type mushrooms and I want to uh, describe them to you. I'm going to start with an edible mushroom that is quite common in the southeastern U.S. and all throughout the summer is one of the mushrooms you can find and consume and often they're quite numerous so you can scrape to together a whole bunch but this is the first I've seen this year. You know, they are uh, very much like warm uh, weather mushrooms, but uh, identifying them is relatively easy. So I'm gonna go through that. But before I begin, I want to talk about uh, the Bolitaceae more generally. So uh, the Bolitaceae are a uh, family of mushrooms or family of species of fungus that produce fruiting bodies that are mushrooms uh, that are characterized by having a spongy undersurface. And you can see this here. It is uh, a porous layer of uh, spongy tubes, essentially. And that's where the spores mature. You can see right here. This is a really mature specimen and so you know, the, um, the spores are probably dropping out at this very moment all over my hands. Uh, but, you know, the Bolitaceae, there's a lot of them. Many of them are edible, including the iconic uh, collection of species that people call Porcini. But we also have species that are not edible and uh, really bitter to the taste. And there are some that are toxic as well. So uh, they can be different, difficult to identify. So within the Bolitaceae family, you have a whole mess of genera. And so for instance, this mushroom uh, is called Retiboletus ornatopes. So um, it is uh, a mushroom, or at least ostensibly because it may change like the northerly version of a mushroom that looks like this and our southerly version may in fact be different things, but presumably uh, Retiboletus ornatopes is one of those genera or genus groups that exist within the Bolitaceae. When it comes to common names, more often than not, you're going to have such and such bolete. But if you want to get into the taxonomy and all that fun stuff, you will start learning uh, a lot of varied genus names. So like Areoboletus, Retiboletus, uh, we have Xerocamelus and Tyl Tylopilus or Tylopolis as I call it. So there's just a whole mess of them. And they can be highly mutable and kind of difficult to identify. This mature specimen uh, shows a lot of sun bleaching and the surface has become sort of a silvery matte color. So, uh, you know, you oftentimes see boletes that start out and they're like brown or purple or even, you know, reddish. Like in the case of this mushroom, it's a perfect example. It starts out sort of a nice cherry red on top and you can see the remains of that, but very quickly it starts to turn orange or bright yellow. And so, you know, boletes are very mutable, uh, not only individual to individual, but individuals throughout the course of their development and uh, life cycle. So, it takes time to get your head around the boletes and don't feel bad if you're not very good at them, or at least uh, I don't feel bad about not being good at them and I just do my best. Uh, anyway, so shaggy stalked boletes are really, as I mentioned, pretty easy to identify from other uh, boletaceae or bolete type mushrooms. First things first, it is a tall and skinny bolete. A lot of mushrooms that are in, uh, you know, the Bolitaceae are more short and squat and larger caps. Uh, again, I'm going to wave this in your face. This is a far more representative specimen of what you would find uh, typically with boletes. But, you know, this fella, the shaggy stalk bolete, Ario boletus betula, is tall and skinny with a little sort of um, 50 cent piece sized cap usually. And underneath you have very brightly colored yellow pores. And again, that's where the spores come from. And then uh, the thing that makes this most distinctive and also the part of the mushroom you'd want to eat is the shaggy stem. So what you have here is sort of this very pleasing dark uh, cherry red color on the stem and then overlaid on the top of it, you have yellow shags. And so they're sort of vertical, but interlocking. And uh, sometimes they're really pronounced and, um, you know, 
project from the stem surface. This mushroom doesn't have as much uh, clarity there, but if you uh, scrape off the surface, pretty quickly you'll see underneath, oh, we have sort of a reddish stem and the yellow stuff is on top of it. So that's a really, uh, you know, that is a really good feature for identifying this mushroom. Uh, another thing is the base of the mushroom I'll draw your attention to. So a lot of these species have uh, colorful mycelium or not very noticeable mycelium. In the case of Areobolita spatula, if you pick one, you will get this sort of floofy big clump of mycelium off of the base almost always. Uh, I don't, you know, normally if I'm not demonstrating, uh, you know, what they look like, I'll just chop them off there and then chop them off here and then I will eat the stem. You got to cook it thoroughly and then um, it's really good with things like dark greens or green beans. So things that go well with uh, those sorts of, of preparations are quite tasty because this brings sometimes a very strong lemony flavor. So you should test it out and see if it agrees with your palate uh, before adding it too liberally. Uh, but, you know, I do very much like this mushroom, uh, you know, and I don't eat a big pile of them for the reason that they are a little bit sour. I don't know if there is a relationship here, but on the inside you have sort of this, uh, you know, yellowish and um, almost kind, so you have, you know, the red surface, whitish yellow on the inside, and then yellow again on the outside. But uh, you can see that this is almost stringy compared to, again, a lot of other boletes, and you tend to not have a lot of uh, fly larvae and maggots in these mushrooms. Uh, a lot of other species, you know, they're beautiful and gorgeous on the outside and full of worms and future flies on the inside. Um, so that's a good mushroom to get to know, and it's super, super abundant in the southeast throughout the summertime. Uh, to talk about Retiboletus ornatopes quickly, uh, it is a very bitter mushroom. And so, uh, you know, I'm going to give it a taste test. I know what's going to happen. It's going to taste gross. Like immediately, very unpalatable bitter. So, uh, you know, that's a perfectly safe practice. What I just did is, you know, nibbling a little bit of the cap and then spitting it out. Uh, that's often most helpful with identifying uh, Boletaceae or Bolete type mushrooms. Also, uh, Russula mushrooms, which are very common and I did numerous videos about, and some of them can be very spicy and peppery. A lot of mushrooms you don't have to do field tests, and I don't typically uh, because I get to recognize mushrooms. And also, uh, you know, even though that's not a toxic activity to do from the mushroom perspective, there is always stuff like growing on top of and inside of, uh, you know, mushrooms. And there's only, uh, you know, my, my interest in uh, basically growing my microbiome based off of things that I nibble off of mushrooms. I have limited interest in that. Okay, so let me um, highlight the reason that this is called Retiboletus ornatopes. Uh, so as you can see, it has the really nice porous layer, but also what's called reticulation. So this is an interlocking sort of fishnet appearance. It's really noticeable at the top. And also uh, the most characteristic of what reticulation looks like. So again, it's a closely interlocking overlay on the mushroom stem. Uh, Retiboletus ornatopes is uh, unique and special because that reticulation tends to widen out, so the spaces between the fishnet get bigger, and it descends almost all the way down the stem. Uh, you have just sort of a, you know, light yellow to bright yellow fruiting body, and the caps of these mushrooms start out uh, slightly lighter yellow than, uh, you know, the undersurface and the stem. And as they mature, and you can see this, you start to see uh, sort of, it becomes a little more matte and also sort of like gray silvery staining and or not staining, but just sort of the surface becomes a little more uh, bleached out or grayish almost. And they can be quite pretty because you get a little bit of shine on them. 
Uh, so that's all I've got for you today. I hope you're having a marvelous mushroom season. It's been pretty dry, and so I'm in a chanterelle patch that is not chanterelling right now, but I'm very hopeful that uh, we'll get more rain, more thunderstorms, and the mushrooms will get their act together. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I am a servant to the mushrooms, the, not the other way around. Oh, actually, the final thing I'll note about Retibolitis ornatopes is it stains yellow crap all over your fingers and it's very difficult to get off. So um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, washing my paws and see if I can rid myself of this. But it's not like sticky or gross. It's almost like a, a powdery thing that almost immediately soaks into your fingertips. And so that will be uh, a fun... Uh, decompression exercise when I get home from my post-work mushroom hunt. I hope you're doing great and we'll talk again soon.